storm. Paul said, I believe God. All right, let's get our Bibles open to Genesis chapter 6 this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, there's blessings that come your way this morning for being here. God's going to bless you in a special way for coming to church this morning. And um, I'm, I'm really shocked. I didn't think this many people would make it out. But what we got to remember is there's way more people watching this online than there is in, in our own church family. So uh, we didn't want to let y'all down, so here we is. Genesis chapter number 6. I'm going to read you about the worst storm it's ever been. And then I'm going to read you some more scripture tonight or this morning. So uh, I also want to tell you, thank you for praying for us down in Rockingham. Had an absolutely wonderful revival. Y'all pray for them. They're having Pastor Appreciation Day for Brother Ronnie this morning. And uh, text him or call him if you get a chance. Tell him you love him and want to uh, appreciate the blessing they've been. They are coming to camp meeting. And uh, we're excited about that too. Genesis chapter 6. And I want you to look at uh, verse 17. Look at what the Lord said. And behold, I, even I, that's God talking, y'all, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Buddy, there's a big one. Worldwide flood. Worldwide. That means Mount Everest, if it was there then, which I strongly doubt, was underwater 30 feet. That's 29,000 feet. I don't think it was there then. I think when the flood happened that the earth crust cracked. The Bible said the fountains were opened up and the great deep water come down this way and water come up that way. And they somebody somebody figured it out and they said that uh, for that to happen, it was raining six inches per minute, 40 days and 40 nights. Um, the earth heaved. Tidal waves around the equator at 100 miles an hour at six miles high. Now, what would a six-mile high wave do? Go up, go up the Grand Canyon, go up in the mountains, and you'll see what it did. That's what tore everything up like it is right now. We all saw this week that water moving can do a lot of stuff. This, this here wasn't a drop in the bucket. I'm not minimizing it, but, uh, but it, to, to, to this one here that I'm, that I'm reading to you about this morning. The earth heaved and, and everything was lost. The, uh, what forms a hurricane is, is, is how them things get started. They go to, out there in the ocean and it has to be 80 degrees. And when the water is 80 degrees, it creates a funnel like when it's evaporating and it goes up 40, 40, 45,000 feet. And then currents, they say, from the twist of the earth gives it a spin. And once it starts spinning, it starts sucking more water up out of the ocean. And them storms, some of them are 400 miles, the storm itself, in diameter. I don't know how big this one was, but... Probably when everything's said and done, this could be the worst damaging hurricane that's, that's ever hit this country as far as damage can, it could be. I don't know. Uh, 200 mile per hour winds. Now, the most deadly hurricane on record for America was in Galveston, Texas, back in uh, 19, right, not early 1900s, and 6,000 people died. But you got to remember back then they couldn't warn people. People didn't know it was coming. And uh, so if, if uh, they'd have been... Wouldn't have been that many if people could evacuate and stuff like that. But but they didn't do that back then. But we knew this one was coming, and you never know. You never know about the weather forecast. Uh, the the bad thing about listening to the weather is sometimes they are right, and then you count them. You can't count them completely out. Uh, but uh, they're not always right. I can't, man said one time he bought this man. He said he bought him a, a weather. He said how am I going to know the weather? He bought him a weather rock, and it's a rock like this. A, a rock. Tied on a string, you can buy them in Gatlinburg and places, hanging like that. He said, "Our way, you know the weather." He said, "If you look outside and see that thing moving like this, it's windy." He said, "If you look out there and it's wet, it's raining. If it's white, it's snowing. If it's gone, a hurricane." Uh, and that 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 might be as as accurate as some of. But this morning, I want us to look at this storm. Now, let me show you another one. Let me show you another storm, right quick. Turn to Jonah chapter one. Jonah chapter number one, and it's going to be really short, so stay with me just a few minutes. And uh, 
Uh, somebody said the Waffle House is open. I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I cook, I cook vegetables on the grill and had a pot so hot I couldn't take it off. And, uh, they had to get wrapped up right out and then fix it up. But we're going to try to get Miss B something to eat, uh, here in a little while. My mother-in-law. But, uh, let's, let's look at Jonah chapter number one uh, this morning. And, uh, look at this storm. Jonah chapter number one. And let's see here. Uh, this would be verse four. Jonah chapter one, verse four. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Now, that brings up the question, did the devil send a storm? And the answer is, in the Bible, God sent storms as it pleased him. But there might be times when the devil can interfere, but only with permission. Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So lightning is a picture of Satan and satanic power, like electricity and stuff. And uh, that's a deep study, but you can learn something about uh, Satan by how, how electricity runs around. And you see, you, you, um, when you see electricity falling, that's a picture of a, the, the power. One of them lightning bolts, they say like, like one hurricane can generate enough power in 30 seconds. One hurricane can generate enough power in 30 seconds than the entire United States uses in a year. That's right. You you don't you don't you don't deal with them. You, all you can do is get out of the way. That's all you can do. And so uh, Jonah, the Lord sent this storm here on Jonah. Now let me show you one more. Let me just show you one more right quick. And this one over in Mark chapter number four. And look at this. Look at this storm. And then I'll bring you a th couple of thoughts, and and we'll go. Mark chapter number four. And look at verse, um, somewhere along in there, verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. This is Mark 4, verse 37. A great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. The ship got full of water. That's bad. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Remember that. And they awake him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now hold your finger right there just a second. So here's this big storm, and they all think they're going to die, and right there in the middle is Jesus asleep on the boat. And they said, Lord, don't you care? I bet you there's a lot of people prayed that the other night. Lord, are you there? Are you going to help us? Do you care? I bet you there's a lot of people praying. They, 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 a lot of people they can't even find right now. And uh, uh, there's no telling the prayers that went up this weekend. Probably a lot. Most have been in the wild. But look at what he said. Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind. This is very important. You look at that. And said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. You know when the wind quits blowing? When he tells it to. You know what you can do about it? Nothing. You know when the, when the, when the rain stops? When God says stop. He said, when? Stop. And there was a great calm. I noticed uh, that when I got here uh, Saturday morning, yesterday morning, uh, it was just as still out there, Lord in mercy. You could hear, you could, all you could hear is a bird chirping, uh, chirping out there. And it was completely still and quiet. The Lord did that. What a difference from the day before. Now I want to give you just a thought this morning and the title of, He's the Eye of the Storm. Three things right quick and we'll, we'll go. Number one, He sends the storm. He sends the storm. Um, and the Lord said, Noah, He said, I've had it. I've had it. It's a big one. This is it. I'm going to drown the world. He promised He'd never do it again. But he drowned the world. God sent the storm in the days of Noah. There is evidence all over this world that at one time everything was underwater. There's thousands and thousands of fish fossils up on top of them mountains, y'all. How'd they get up there? And you know there's certain kinds of fish that when they're scared or they're in danger, their fins pop out and they, they do a certain way and ain't none of them like that. There's like, bam, crushed 
all at the same time. There's only one explanation for that. That was a worldwide catastrophe of the flood. Scientists say that glaciers floated down through here and cut gra- cut out the grain, you know, made them rocks. But that's impossible. That could not and did not happen. The great flood was there. It, it, just like the Bible said. It's all turning out to be true. Just like the Bible said. Sure enough. So he sends the storm. When Jonah was out of God's will, God sent the storm, and the storm didn't stop until Jonah was out in the belly of the whale. Brother Mike touched on that just a little bit in Sunday school about the men of God in this country. It might be that the, that God's not going to bless our country because of a bunch of lazy, good-for-nothing preachers that won't stand up for what's right and stand and get a job instead of doing, preaching for a paycheck or something like that. And that's what that, Jonah caused that storm because he wasn't right with God. And he took off and finally got right and it stopped. So God sends the storm. Number two, number two, God steers the storm. He steers the storm. He told it when to uh, start, and men can't do nothing about it. I I, I didn't get to see the news much. Uh, I did down, in, and I turned it on one late when I come in at the motel down there in Rockingham, and it had these guys on there, and they were saying, "Well, Helene or whatever they called it is supposed to come up through here," and they had about five or six lines. One of them went around this way for Tennessee. One of them went around. And they said, this is the European model. And uh, this is the whatever, the American model, whatever it was. And this is that model. And this, we and at this time, we are not sure, but we think, without, you know who's going to steer that thing? God is. You know which way it'll go? Whichever way he tells it to. And I know people prayed, and I prayed, and we all prayed, and none of us are saying, why this storm happened like it did? I don't know. That's only God knows. Only God knows. Uh, only God knows. But I tell you one thing. He steered that storm. He steered the one in Noah's day. He steered the one in Jonah's day. Men can't do it. They are absolutely. You know, men in the world, they get to, people get to thinking, I've got it. I've got this. I've got everything under control. I run my life. Listen, it don't take but about one hour or less for God to show you who's really in control this thing. It don't take long, people, for all of us to realize, buddy, life can be gone just like that. All the stuff that we've got, we can lose just like that. Don't ever get cocky. Don't ever get your head up there where you think you've got it made and nothing can touch you. I'm telling you, the Lord cut your feet up under you in a split second and don't have to give an effort to get there. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that controls the storm, that tells the wind to lay down, brother, that tells tells the rain to start. That tells the cloud. We serve that God that steers that storm. The Lord says, uh, go about a hundred miles left. It goes that way. The Lord says, go up there about this way. It does exactly what he tells it to. Now, you know, I know that there are people out there that say, if God's so good, why did he let something like this happen? I'll tell you what you better think, buddy. Listen, if God gave us what we deserve, he had wiped every one of us out. God is good. Don't you get it? This, if I was God sitting up there in heaven and I had to look down and I'd see 300,000 kids getting sold this week and I had to see all the filth that's going, I, I, I'd have done a lot worse. I'm not as good as God. I'm not as merciful as He is. The Lord has been merciful to us. The Lord blessed you if you're here today and you got health and life and food and a place to lay down. I started to take a shower, but I ain't got one. Amen. I'm going to jump in the pond after a while. Uh, but I, listen, y'all. Hey, God's been good to us. All you can do is get out of the way. I heard about a storm up in uh, Basel uh, uh, and uh, being bombed by the Russians back many, 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 many years ago. And they said that... Uh, a storm came through that town and actually kept that town from being bombed by Russia. And they started a school for missionaries in that spot. So look at the good that came out of it. That's like, a, I think it was, I don't know, one of them old philosophers like, what's that guy's name? Old, uh, old crazy guy, uh, used to have all the old smart guy. They asked him, he said, uh, uh, do you think it'll quit raining? And he said, it always has. That's right. That's my third point, and I'm done. 
Number one, he sends a storm. Number two, he steers the storm. Finally, and I'm done, he stops the storm. There's one thing all storms have in common. They all finally come to an end. Now imagine, ladies, any of you ladies complaining, imagine Noah and his wife in that boat. Noah, when are they going to get the power on? I have no idea. Noah, when can we get away from these stinking animals? Honey, I think about a year. A year? Call Duke Power. There ain't no such thing, darling. Honey, when can I take a shower? A year. <whistles> now, I'm sure they had fresh water on there, but they didn't waste it taking a shower. Now, look, it's been what, two days? I, Miss B had some lanterns. We went over to her house yesterday and got them. I couldn't, couldn't get up her driveway, so I had to park and walk tree across the road. She got these little bitty lanterns you turn on. So I took, went to my prayer closet last night, and I turned that lantern on, and I was praying. I thought, you know what? I better save all I can for that battery. That battery, we ain't got no light. And I turned it off. Good night. You, <laughs> you talk about, I couldn't see my hand in front of me. And I thought, it's sort of humid. And somehow or another, the house smelled a little mo, mo like everything wet. A year, y'all. One year. No restaurant. No longhorn. No, you, she couldn't even get out in the car and turn the air conditioning on. One year. But it was finally over. The day came when that ark came down on the Mount of Ararat. And he said, you can get out. I bet she came out of there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The, you, know, uh, you know, it's just good to look out there and see the sun this morning. We ain't been without it for like three days. <laughs> and what a blessing. Can you imagine? Not one sight of the sun for one solid year. But it finally came down and it finally cleared up. Hallelujah. And it willed us to. I close with this little story this morning. Thomas Edison had a lot of stuff, and he's one of the greatest inventors that the world's ever seen. He invented all kinds of stuff, like rec record players, phonograph, stuff like that. And uh, I've, I've been by it. I've never been to it down there in Fort Myers. They have the Thomas Edison Museum, and you can go in there. It's amazing. They say, I've never went. And uh, they, they, Thomas Edison invented, like, the light bulb. And he, he had a fire in... New Jersey, West Orange, New Jersey is where he had his had his uh, laboratory, studio and stuff. And it caught on fire. And this was December 1914, and he had $2 million worth of life work. His life work was in that fire. All his studies, all his records, all the stuff that he'd invented, all his books was going up in flames. And he stood there, and he said, his son, come out there. And there's that old, old man, old white-headed man, wind blowing through his hair. And he stood there, and his son come up, and he said, where's your mother? He said, I don't know. She's over there somewhere. He said, go get her. She'll probably never get to see nothing like this again. And they stood there and watched his life. Work. You mind, everything you've worked for your whole life, everything, almost 70 years old. And there it went up in smoke. And Thomas Edison had enough sense to say this, quote, there is great value in disaster. He said disasters can be a great thing because it gives us a chance to start over again. And Noah and his wife came out and said, everything's gone. We've lost everything. But we're alive. We're healthy we're saved. Thank God we get to start all over again. You know, you know there's a lot of people that are going to have to start all over. Y'all come on and get your song ready. There's a lot of people going to have to start all over after this, y'all. With nothing. With nothing. Thomas Edison said, he said, there's great value in disaster. Let's stand with our heads bowed, please. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed, never eye closed. You that are watching from home, bow your head, close your eyes. This morning, maybe, 
the Lord's nudged you a little bit. He's nudged you a little bit and said, Hey, have I got your attention now? Are you listening now? Now you need to get your priorities straight. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never been saved. You don't know what it's like to be a Christian. Come to the Lord this morning. Come to Him giving your heart. Father, we thank You for all You've done for us. Thank You, Lord, for this little time of fellowship today. Have You in our hearts. Help us to appreciate what You've done for us. God, I pray that You'd reach out there and touch somebody this morning. Let them come to Jesus. Get it right. Maybe somebody watching from home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. They're singing today. They're singing today. If you need to come, you come on right now. Amen. Maybe you need to come to say, Lord, I want to make a new fresh start. I want to make a new fresh start right here today. Amen. 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 On the sea, there's someone wrong. Listen to these words. Listen right here. Amen. Amen. They did not understand how the Prince of Peace could find them in the middle of their seas. But with little faith and God's good grace, joy would overcome Amen. their disbelief. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, there are times in life when I face a storm. softly now. Now today today uh, leave this one on yeah, this one. Today was the day that a bunch of people supposed to join the church but I had postponed it but we got a man here wanting to join so bad we're going to go ahead and do it for those that are here. So y'all are, uh, come on up here big boy He's, uh, he, first thing he said we're going to join church today ain't we preacher so all y'all that are going to join can make a line right across here Right across here, y'all come on. They're here today. Praise the Lord. Now get me on this one. Amen. Amen. Up. Amen. Amen. Up. Amen. There we go. It's coming. Come on, Brother Tony. Amen. What about that? Well, he's supposed to have church today. Look at that People joining church. What about that? <laughs> Amen. All right. I'm. I'm this lady has been asking me about joining church for weeks. I praise God for her. Thank the Lord for her. And uh, praise God from her. She's a, she's a, a bus lady. Uh, she's been coming good. She loves our church. We love her. So I'm going to make the motion. Second. All in favor, let me know. I'm up to the hand. Amen. All right. I'm just 
That's Eric's mom's what I always call her. <laughs> Amen. She's been coming a long time. Uh, some, I thank God for her. These have all been saved, been baptized. Some will make the most of Miss Kim. Uh, right hand. All in favor, let me know. Left lift the hand. All right. Big boy right here. He needs no introduction. Uh, 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 Amen. Brother Spencer here. He told me not long ago, he said, I want to join Shining Light. Y'all are doing something for God. Amen. So I'm going to make the motion. Second. All in favor, let me know. I'm left to hand. Hand. Einstein. I thought he's dead a long time ago. But here he is reincarnated. Amen. Brother Randy and him started bringing him. Appreciate Chris. His stand for the Lord. So I'm going to make the motion. Second. All in favor, let me know. I'm left to hand. We'll take both, both Sean, Leanne, Chubb. Uh, Colton, all of them, all together this morning as a family. How about that? Uh, you want to say a word, Chubb? You got a word on your own? Yeah, you do. I think she needs to sing a song. How I many uh, raise your hand if you think Chubb ought to sing a song? Right here. Don't make fun of her. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, all right. I'm just kidding. I pick on her a lot. Hey, Amen. Well, I appreciate them. I didn't know there wasn't members. They don't, uh, someone make the motion? Second. All in favor, let me know. Uplift the hand. Then Brother Tony and Miss Michelle, they, they, I, they've been here for a, a year almost, right? These folks come from California. We just love them to death. Thank God so much for them. And Miss Kathy's gone on vacation, and y'all pray for her. Uh, she knew the right time to get out of town, didn't she? Uh, she oh, she's in Florida, so it's just as bad there. Okay. Well, good. I, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, let's take them together. All in, uh, motion made. All in favor, let me know. Left lifted hand. Oh, you got the girls? No, I see them. I see Amber. Amber, uh, both girls. Both girls want to join Amber. I don't know their names. Ashlyn and Madeline. All her girls' names and Lynn like that. And uh, y'all know them. Thank the Lord for Miss Amelia here. Uh, I. Her name's Amber, and I just kid her about her name. But thank the Lord for her and what He's done in their life, and they're a blessing to us. These girls are a blessing to us. She does a lot of work, clean up the double wide when we have company and stuff like that. Someone make the motion. Second. All in favor, let me know. Enough lifted hand. All right. Now we're gonna. Here's y'all. Just stay up here. The way we're gonna end the service today is uh, Kerrigan's gonna play. I'm glad he's the eye of the storm. Amen. So tell everybody, put it on Nosebook. We had church today and had a mob. Lord, I don't know how many people's here today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thir Thirteen people joined the church. What a blessing. Ain't that good? You come around and shake their hand. Be back at six o'clock tonight. God bless you. Amen. Shake their hand. Make them welcome.